Valvoline and Advanced Auto Parts have teamed up this summer to make sure that you're getting the ultimate protection. How? Valvoline Full Synthetic Motor Oils are specially engineered to provide 24 times stronger protection against engine killing contaminants than the leading full synthetic. If you want to maximize the life of your engine, trust the ultimate protection. Trust Valvoline. Get five quarts of Valvoline Full Synthetic Motor Oil for only $32.99 at your local Advanced Auto Parts store today. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Prime. From streaming to shopping, Prime helps you get more out of your passions. So whether you're a fan of true crime or prefer a nail-biting novel from time to time, with services like Prime Video, Amazon Music, and fast free delivery, Prime makes it easy to get more out of whatever you're into or getting into. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime to learn more. It's just a 30-minute slice of comedy. mini Just a little sample of what they usually bring you every week. mini It's just Nathan and Brendan with a little bit of bull. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about bull, Doogie. Then I can dig it. mini Hey! Hey! Happy Black History Month, everyone. Oh, let's try to keep this <laughs> unpolitical or apolitical. Uh, I, I, I like Shaft. Yeah, I do too. I'm okay. actually kind of intrigued by the uh, the new one coming out. Ooh, Generations. Yeah. Um, You're Nathan, right? Yes, I am Nathan. Okay, and I'm Brendan. Mm-hmm. And this is a What Were They Thinking mini episode. Yes. Episode-da, you might yeah. say. And uh, we're going to further our discussion that we had last week about, you know, how just, just I mean, really no. th- th- understand the brilliance of Tyler no. Perry and his comprehend how he's so much higher above than other filmmakers. That no, it really we're not. It's, it's just... We inf- really are What? We're not doing that. What? No. I got a whole we're, format and everything written out here. We're going to drop that format. I talk about Medea's family reunion, Medea goes to jail, Medea's witness relocation, Medea's funeral, family funeral that's coming out. Medea's funeral? I'll no, watch that. family funeral. Oh. I, I think it's going to be like death of funeral, but, you know, Medea. Ugh. So. Nope. We're not doing any of that. <laughs> going to go ahead and... Yeah, just can't just cancel all that. Just can't just cancel that out. I spent a week on that. I don't know I why. Gonna, I was going to talk about Alex Cross. You know, okay. Even just when he's an actor, that he's still brilliant. <laughs> you when he was in Star Trek and everything. You know that Alex Cross is terrible. <laughs> Lee Entertaining, yes. Is this a bit... I don't know what you're talking about. Alex Cross is one of those boring movies I've seen in a long time. I, I again, I, I, every He's, second Tyler Perry is on screen, I was like, "This is, this is what we've been working towards as, uh, as a society." I can't believe you're carrying this fucking thing over another week. What thing? Oh, Nathan. Yes, Brandon. Well, since you want to scrap my. Tyler Perry format. What shall we discuss? So the new Shaft movie you were saying. Yeah. Okay. Talking about that? I can dig it. Okay. It's got Sam Jackson and Richard Roundtree in it. Ooh, and the new guy. Very good. Sam Jackson Jr.? No? No no relation? Just the new guy? Is he like a famous dude? I don't think so, right? I don't believe so, no. So, that's cool. It'd be cool if it was, like, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Or Chadwick Boseman would be kind of cool. Given what I I saw him do in Message from the King, yeah, I think he could, he could, uh, he could be a real cool guy just dealing out the street justice. I mean, motherfucking Black Panther. Yes. Or maybe, like, um, Rick Moranis. <laughs> Or Michael Sarah, Or Michael Douglas. <laughs> I only say that because of Donald Glover's bit on Michael Sarah as Shaft is the only time I would be lining up to pay money for a Michael Sarah movie. <laughs> oh yeah, you have this weird hatred of Michael Sarah. I don't think it's weird at all. 
It's a little weird. Nope, he's terrible. Okay. I mean, you don't even like him in This Is The End? Uh, okay. I'll, I, I might give a pass on that simply because he's playing an over-the-top version of himself. Yeah, you know, in a movie where he acts... <laughs> what I, were they was, thinking? Oh, sorry. You know... I just heard in a movie where and I got got thrown off. Right, I get it. I get where you're coming from. <laughs> it's it again. It's a, it's a movie where he acts, and every other movie he just refuses to. So not even like uh, Scott Pilgrim. Oh no, no. You don't like that movie? I just I it no the movie's fine. I don't like him. I every time I see him, he's the same goddamn character. How do you feel about? Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna sneeze. Damn it, Tommy! <laughs> ah, I can't believe you sneezed. Oh, oh god damn it, Vince McMahon. How did you get in here? I heard someone was gonna sneeze, and I said, if you sneeze, yeah, fire. Barbara Streisand's here, too. I'm going where there's lots of lovers in the air. Oh, thank God, Bradley Cooper came to save the day. Hi, I'm Bradley Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's pretty spot on. <laughs> oh, he said it like that's uh, reminded me of like Wayne's World, the Delaware bit. <laughs> yeah, Hot, hey. we're in Delaware. Delaware. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, to answer God. your question earlier, Jesse Usher is the guy who's playing Shaft the Third. Okay. And he was in the Independence Day sequel. Oh God. Um. Not that that's like. I'm sorry. That that's an oh God is in like. Not that that's like the most horrible thing ever created, but it's pretty goddamn boring. <laughs> Have you seen it yet? No. Oh, it's just like I hate. Okay, one of the mo. Th- one of my least favorite things they do in a sequel mm-hmm. is when the star doesn't come back. Like, which is like whatever. That's not. It's out of your control sometimes, right? So Will Smith didn't want to come back. I I understand that completely. He doesn't need to do it. Right. But they do a thing where they're just like, do you know how they explain away his character? No. They say he died during a flight simulation. <laughs> so, not only did he die, he died being a putz right <laughs> like i think the only person that comes back is well jeff goldblum comes back i think yeah he's back jeff goldblum's back and like that other like older doctor is back that older scientist dude and are we um, fire scene no <laughs> no there's someone else i forget who it is it's such a minor character and uh, uh judd judd hirsch Oh, maybe it's just, yeah, 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 yeah. That's who it is. Okay, and Bill Pullman, right? Who uh, he's also there. I gotta say, for you telling me that, that is some straight up WWE burying they did for that character. <laughs> yeah, it's like the producers were like, "Well, fuck you, Will Smith. Your character died a pussy." <laughs> and Will Smith's like, "That's fine. I'm gonna go live with my millions and millions of dollars." Yeah, they basically did, like, the whole, like, uh, they gave the CM Punk treatment where they're like, you know what, Brock Lesnar's gonna hold the belt for longer than you, and C- and CM Punk's like, cool, uh, I don't care. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I um, really, really, it's, really don't give a fuck. It's all staged and choreographed, so yeah. let, let, him, let him hold on to that belt as long as he wants. I kind of <laughs> think that's... a goddamn thing. Not to go too deep into wrestling, because, I mean, we never do. Never. But, um, I kind of do find that funny. Where they do things to like, kind of like, st- like they, they take away all CM Punk's records, right? Yeah. Like the belt thing to have Brock Lesnar hold it longer. Even his wife's. Yeah, his wife's record. And like, what do they think? Do they really think that either of them give a shit? Again, but that's the, that's the old school Vince McMahon mentality. Yeah. Right? He thinks by doing that, it's gonna, you know, it's, it, it's gonna lessen... CM Punk's, I guess, legacy, for lack of a better term. Which, you know, like, I only like people who have record record holding uh, title belt reigns. Right. <laughs> Jake the Snake was a hack. What, what, what title did he ever win? But, and that's the thing. Back in 
you know, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and everything like that, that mattered to people who were fans of wrestling. Because, mm. you know, either kayfabe was fully in effect, or it was one of those things where people are whispering about it being, you know, all of staged contest. Now, because everything's peeled back for everybody, and everybody knows that, you know, a title is just essentially... You know, you saying that this person's the top of this division and the face for this portion of our show, but not necessarily someone who actually beat in a legitimate contest anybody else. The titles don't mean as much to fans. It's cool to see a guy get a nod uh, of respect to say that, you know, here's the title. This is in recognition for all the hard work you've done. Hmm. I get that, but by getting that title and them saying that, you've already given them their legacy, whether their title run is five years long or a month and a half. Or, in the case of Zack Ryder, one night. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I know it's it's just, it is a weird mentality to still have, like, ha sticking it to you. It's, you know, it. that's how he came up. That's how he ran his business and still does, apparently. So he's going to stick with what he knows. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not not to say that uh, there hasn't been any sort of progressive thought from Vince McMahon and how that company is run and everything like that, but there's still some old guard type stuff that is going to stick around as long as he's sticking around. Yeah. How do we get to that? <laughs> Uh, Irma Garrett and Art Nair. Oh, the Will Smith and Independence Day 2 thing. Right. Yeah. So anyway, Independence Day, Resurgence, not recommended. <laughs> Starring the guy who is Shaft the Third. Yeah, and Jeff Goldblum. Right, that's how we got there. Okay. And so, Nathan, you saw a movie recently. I did. And it was called? The Prodigy. And it was good? It was good to a point. Okay. I've I'd seen the ads for the movie uh for the last few weeks and it made out to be like, you know, this killer kid movie. It's there's a twist to it. Um and it's you know, unnerving. And I'll say this, the lead up to the final act and more specifically the climax of the film was good. Really good. Um, in my opinion, anyways. Like, the the dread that I got from the kid and uh, the mom, who played by uh, Taylor Schilling. Is that her that name? That sounds right, yeah. One from Orange is the New Black. She's an actress. Yes. <laughs> and she's the mom. And uh, Colin Fiore is in it. It's it's fun. It's, it's good. I took Patty to see it. Uh, we had to drive to Fredericton to see it. Because it was not showing here uh, in St. John. And uh, Patty's like, well, you know, what do you want to do Saturday? Because uh, my mother-in-law took the took the girls um, because my birthday's next week. Or last week, whenever this comes out. Last week. Happy Two weeks early ago. slash belated birthday. <laughs> right. So she's like, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I wouldn't mind maybe, you know, doing a day trip up to uh, to Fredericton or Moncton or maybe going to see a movie and uh, she's like okay so I start looking at the movies at the theater here and I'm like oh that movie The Prodigy that I wanted to see that's not playing here that's kind of odd I wonder I wonder if it's playing elsewhere so I start flipping through and of course um I checked in Fredericton, and it was there. So I was like, okay, well, we'll go to Fredericton and see it. And I got to have poutine at Smoke's Poutinery. So that was enjoyable. And like I said, the lead-up to everything in the movie was enjoyable, but the payoff was, was not. I was really let down by the ending. And I don't... I don't want to give away too much of anything, 
but it's the same kind of the same issue I had with heredity uh or sorry hereditary uh where I like a comeuppance and I don't feel that they delivered on that in this movie yeah I don't know it's kind of a cliche now because I remember when it used to be kind of cool it was like oh a horror movie that ends with the main character is not succeeding in the end. That's kind of a uh, risque thing to do. And now it's in every fucking horror movie. Yeah, and I'm tired of it. I, I No, I am too. <laughs> Especially when it's like, it's... Like, I don't know. I think I was okay with it in Hereditary. Because I think I liked it more, a little bit more than you did. But yeah. I, I, know you, I know you liked it. But you had issues with it. Um, but I think I was more okay with it in that movie. But it's movies like The Strangers Pray at Night. Yeah. When I'm like, you could just end this. Did you see it? I don't know. No, I haven't it. seen it because, uh, honestly, I didn't see what everybody saw in the first one. Oh, see, I kind of liked the first one, I, but I hadn't I seen it. Well, that's the way I would describe it. I kind of liked it, too. Yeah. But it wasn't... For some reason, when, this, when the sequel was coming out, everyone, everything I read about it was like, this is the movie people were clamoring. I was like, who the fuck was clamoring for this movie? Yeah. <laughs> I feel they said everything they needed to say with that first one. And I mean, if you want to see, um, if you want to see a good version of that movie, there's actually like, I think there's like a, there's a, oh, I saw it for like one of the, um, one year when I did the 31 days of horror for Halloween. Mm. <laughs> There was a movie I saw, I forget what it was called, but it was like a French movie or something, and it was the same idea kind of as The Strangers, but there's a twist in it, and the twist is really good and unexpected, um, it and it's high only... High Tension, an... was it? No, it wasn't High Tension. I really like High Tension, though. Yeah. Um, but it's an hour and ten minutes. It's very short, but yeah, I wish I could remember what it was called, but that was like a, like a much better version of that, which isn't surprising, because like... I mean, I don't want to sound like, you know, put on my monocle and my fucking beret, <laughs> but a lot of times when Americans try to do remakes of international movies, the international movies usually turn out better. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's some exceptions, like The Ring was pretty good, and like, I mean, I can't think of too many others, but... You know. But the, uh, let the right one in and let me in. The, they were both, I think they were equally good. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that I enjoy The Departed better than the, uh, original, uh, I think it's like a, I don't remember if it's like Infernal a, Affairs. Infernal Affairs. Yeah. yeah, it's a Hong Kong movie, right? Yes. Yeah. I enjoy Infer Infernal Affairs, but I, I like The Departed quite a bit more, but there, there's very few, there's very few examples like that for me. Hmm. Um, so I think like, yeah, I don't know. The Strangers, yeah, it was weird. It was like, I watched it and I was like, well, that was fine, but I mean, I'm not like... God, I need to watch this. I need a to million see more times. of that exactly. Yeah, and, and and well, so yeah. So the thing with the strangers pray at night is like, oh, okay. Like the the way. I mean, do you want me to just spoil it? Go right ahead. Okay. Spoiler alert: If anyone hasn't seen the strangers pray at night, do yourself a favor. You don't need to watch it. It's not that great. But <laughs> <laughs> basically, what happens is like the the killers. Surprisingly, I didn't. I it actually caught me off guard with this, but yeah. she. One of the girls, the survivors, actually ends up killing all of the the bad guys. Okay, and I'm like, oh shit! Like I didn't expect that. I thought they'd leave it open for a seat, another sequel, right? Mm -hmm. So she kills them all off, and she goes to the hospital, and then all of a sudden the door opens and there's someone standing there, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? That doesn't even make sense. Cause you just fucking killed off all the villains. Yeah, and now there's someone else just there. So they're like. Or are they like a murder cult? Like I have no idea. I I, I don't know. Like there, but you can't just like say, "Oh, uh, NVM." There's another character <laughs> at the very at the like minute eighty seven of eighty eight. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, that well, drives me nuts. And I think what bugs me the most about the movie where or movies where there's no comeuppance is when there is straightforward. None whatsoever. Like Mother Superior, straightforward none. Right, just straight up none. <laughs> um, when you when you go through the whole movie and you're expecting some sort of some sort of payoff for someone fighting the good fight, and there's n there isn't any at all. 
that's that's bothersome to me because it's to me it's it i was like then why did i watch all that well it's like you're just watching someone get tortured and then killed and then it's the end of the movie yeah it's like what i don't i don't mind when there's a you know there's a comeuppance and then at the end they do the sequel tease i don't mind the sequel tease but i don't like when the sequel tease is like oh the main character just got killed yeah after they went through all that right yeah. like when you when you see freddy's eyes open okay that's a sequel yeah but there was still a there was still there was still a payoff for you know the final girl you still got to see someone murder freddy krueger yes he like, was whether he comes back or put, not right yeah so there he was there was put a stop to and mm. that it doesn't happen and I, it, that's the endings those are the endings that bother me it's because then everything i i just wasted an hour and a half to 2 hours for for nothing for no no payoff fuck man even in hostel there's a payoff yeah and hostel part 2 yes like and these are like known as torture porn movies that's it they they have to go through this stuff in order to come out the other end alive and having you know conquered evil for the lack of better term mm. and then when you get movies where none of that happens you're just like what was the fucking point like the human centipede yeah right that's a that's the, a huge example yeah because literally like we go from yeah it just ends and it's like it's just as terrible as how it started yeah and i mean I, I, the movie I, too well yeah <laughs> But I get why it may have seemed like groundbreaking when it was first done, when they it was they first started doing it. I guess as as a a thing in in cinema. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, it was it's it because, was kind of cool at first. Yeah, because you're like, oh, well, that's it's interesting. I didn't expect them to end like that. No, that's kind of wow, huh? Hmm, but look at that. Hmm. After a while, you're like. I'm not getting anything out of these movies because there's no payoff for any of them. Yeah. And I I feel the same way sometimes when I'm like if I'm listening to um I don't know like radio play broadcasts or podcasts rather uh where they uh they're like the No Sleep podcast. I don't know if you listen to that or not. Uh, a little bit, yeah. But they they it's a really good podcast and it's, you know, it's collected stories um when they have ones that that just end and I'm like, "Well, what the f- what the fuck happened next?" Yeah. You know, I I appreciate that you think that that is the culmination, but there needs to be more to this story. This is why I'm not super into uh horror TV shows mm-hmm. unless they are like self unless they are like sort of like American horror story uh, style one season's one story yeah yeah and as long as the ending is like solid i'm like okay cool i can like deal with being kind of on the edge of a cliff at every ep- at the end of every episode or every second episode or whatever yeah but like yeah like it it's just it's exhausting it feels like you've gone through all that stress and then you're just kind of like let down mm-hmm. yep i'm on board with that for mo- for the most part I, occasionally occasionally it works, but most of the time, I'm just like, oh, cool, another bleak fucking horror movie ending. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll, and I have no problem watching like bleak movies, like just like mo- movies. I have to be in the right mood, obviously, but I'll watch a bleak movie, no problem. But like it, it just like horror movies. I don't know. Well, anyway. I don't like that's it. I don't mind like you said a bleak movie. It if it if it's not a horror movie, it's just you know someone's kind of miserable yeah they're you know the movie is just a slice of their life that you're witnessing i can i can deal with that yeah but if i'm watching a horror movie there's clearly defined good guy big baddie the big baddie has to there has to be some sort of punishment or uh, you know, retribution for all the terrible things that the big baddie does through the entire movie 
has to come at the end. And if it doesn't, I feel let down. And I can already hear people say, oh, yeah, it has to. You're just saying that because that's that's the way people want you to feel. That's the way they want you to think. No, that's the way I think. That's the way I feel. If If I'm watching people go through hell... I want them to come out on the uh, someone to come out on the other side having gotten through it not yeah. being oh well this was an exercise in futility and now I'm dead. Yeah, and it's just like not and also like not every fucking movie needs to end with a fucking sequel tease. Right. Like, like just wrap up your story. Yeah. They're, it it almost feels lazy like they didn't know how to end it so they're just like oh maybe he's not dead. Yeah. What? I, yeah. I, if we could, it, it's like uh, what is it? B- brain scan. Ugh. Remember brain at the end with the dog was still there yeah. with the foot and everything. Made no sense whatsoever. No, no sense whatsoever. And that was just straight up done uh, as a sequel tease and yeah. to make you go, wait a minute, was this real or wasn't it real? And it, which, yeah, we well we got into that a lot because that made no sense at all. Yeah. Or at the end of uh, Freddy vs. Jason, when Jason's walking out of the water holding Freddy's head, and then Freddy's looks, okay, sequel, but I mean, those movies are known for that. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, in that in that movie, that was that was also like a studio thing. I don't think they could have one emerge the true winner, you know what I mean? I, honestly, I, I don't, I wish that they could have done that. And I was really surprised that they didn't go with Freddy as a straightforward winner because, you know, it's New Line Cinema. And it is, I mean, in all honesty, it's the house that Freddy built. I mean, I every time I would see the New Line Cinema's logo, I would immediately think of Nightmare on Elm Street. But I think the reason they couldn't is because it was a deal with uh, Oh, Paramount. no, it was. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And I guess the only the only real way you can get a, away with with that is by having Jason be a sympathetic character that has to fight Freddy. So it's okay when he comes out on top. Yeah. Yeah. Horror movies, am I right? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Especially nowadays. Uh, well, I mean, um, I'm curious to see how... Uh, what's that movie coming up? The Curse of La Llorona or whatever? I'm curious to see how that turns out. Yeah, I saw the ad for that when I went to see uh, The Prodigy, and I'm actually really intrigued by it because it looks like a pretty pretty fun ghost story. I really don't like the marketing, though, because they, on the poster it says, from the producers who brought you The Conjuring Universe, and the way it's written... Mm-hmm. It just looks like it's trying to say that it's a mo- it's a conjuring movie, and I I there are so many people uh, while I'm working at the theater. There's so many people co- going up and being like, "Oh, a new conjuring movie," and I actually make the make the time to go to the make. No, actually, it's not. Just so you're you're not let down. <laughs> it's just a James Wan movie. <laughs> it's is it James Wan? I think so. Yeah. Oh well, I mean that's good. I guess he's producer. Oh, okay. Just that's why they so. can say it from the people who brought you the Conjuring universe. So, so we don't know who's actually directing it. I not off the top of my head. No, Steven Spielberg. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, he works with Blumhouse. Yeah. <laughs> is he, it a blue? Is it a Blumhouse movie? I, I don't know. I just kind of assumed it was, but uh, let's see. How many Blumhouse movies have I liked? I liked Happy Death Day. Yeah, and I really enjoyed the Halloween, the new Halloween. Yeah, uh, that's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> Truth or Dare was pretty awful. Oh, that was fucking terrible. That was devastatingly bad. What was the other one they they did like not that long ago? I don't know. I'm looking anyway. this up now. I know they did one with Topher Grace. That one I saw on Netflix. Topher Grace is in a God movie coming out. Is he now? Yeah. It's called Breakthrough. Okay. Blumhouse is known for Insidious, Split, The Purge, Happy Death Day, uh, The Sinister Movies, Paranormal Activity, and The Gift. Ooh, The Gift is really good. Yeah. 
Have you not seen The Gift? I think I have seen that one. That's the one with uh, Jason Bateman in it? Yeah. Yeah, that's... He's really... That's a really fucking creepy movie. <laughs> it is a really... Yeah, that's a that's a great one. And that's one... Okay, he, there you go. There's a good example. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen The Gift, people. But that's a good example of a movie that ends with a little bit of comeuppance, but a little bit of, like, unpredictability at the same time. And I'm perfectly okay with that ending. Yeah. Uh, Ouija Origin of Evil was the good Ouija. Yes. They, they produced Get Out. That makes sense. That's crazy. That's easily their best movie, then. <laughs> yes. Which has nothing to do with them, I'm sorry to say. That's Jordan Peele's baby, all the way. It's unfortunate, though, they were involved with uh, Unfriended and The Gallows. <laughs> I like Unfriended. Ugh. I don't, I, uh, the Gallows. What the fuck is The Gallows? That's like a found footage uh, type movie where the kids are putting on like a high school production about I don't know some town story where somebody was hung and it intertwine inter, sorry intertwines with uh, a ghost story about a production for the same play that was done years and years ago where uh, someone was someone was killed and I think that one of them was like the I want to say the drama teacher but it was it's it's just awful. It's not very good at all. Weirdest thing I just read from Bloomhouse. Okay, it's a lot, I, 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 we're not just gonna read off Bloomhouse's Wikipedia page all episode, folks. Don't worry. <laughs> but the last thing I just want to mention here, because I just read this uh, in 2014, Bloomhouse produced Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, sure, The Purge, Anarchy, okay, Jezebel, Ouija, and Whiplash. Yep. <laughs> Not a horror movie. <laughs> no, but they're not all horror movies either. That's true. Most of them tend to be, though. Yes. Uh, also, a strong recommend for Whiplash if anyone out there hasn't seen it. Um. Anyway, so Bloomhouse's Wikipedia page aside, we, <laughs> we, Nathan, we should reveal, do our big reveal of our next uh, film. Yes. This is going to be, a, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be quite the palate cleanser for me anyway. <laughs> Well, you're talking about. I wish Patty had picked another Medea movie at this point. Oh, now I could not do two of those in a row. <laughs> Good God! Uh, but if you remember, my hint uh, last week was Yippee Modem Fixer. So let's listen to the trailer. Press the button, Frank. Thanks, Max. I'm doing America a favor. Is the country willing to pay for it? FAA just issued a critical alert. The entire network went down. Transportation system's crashing and they just hit the entire financial sector. You have no idea who you're dealing with. I'll take it from here. With a car. I was out of bullets. Bruce, I'll check in. Hold on a minute. Looks like he's coming around. You see that? Yes, I did it. Hang on. Officer McLean, I need you to behave. Daddy. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go kill this guy and get my daughter. I'll go get my daughter and kill this guy. I'll kill all of them. Did you want to say something? You're the guy, brother. Why 
Why'd you bring a cop into my command center? <laughs> command center? It's a basement. Who is this man? Well, there you have it. You better live free <laughs> or die hard. Or die hard 4.0, whichever. Yeah. I yeah, when I when I looked for it, it was called Die Hard 4, and I was like, I, I what? I don't remember it being called Die Hard 4. <laughs> it was well, okay. When it was originally being released, it was going to be called Die Hard 4.0 to go along oh, with the whole okay. motif that they're using with computers and everything. And then at one point, I don't know when, it got switched to Live Free or Die Hard, which is... The motto for... Well, Live Free or Die was is the state motto for, like, New Hampshire. Does it take place in New Hampshire? No. <laughs> what? No. Okay, we'll get into that, because I want to... I have questions about that already. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like we've got, you've got a lead-in for the uh, little bit of trivia that's uh, going to lead into the next episode for Live Free or Die Hard. Yes, thank you, uh, Commercial Pitchman. No problem. Glad I could be here. Hey, is Montrose there? No, he's not. He doesn't do the mini-episodes, but I'm more than glad to read the copy that he's provided us with. Okay, go right ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, do check out Montrose Monkington III. Uh, you can see him on YouTube, Montrose Monkington TV. You can follow him on Facebook, Montrose Monkington III, Esquire and Friends. Finally, you can follow him on Twitter, at Montrose the Third. That's the number three, R.D. Thank you. More later. And, of course, like our podcast, you can find us on all the podcatchers. We're on Podbean at www.ttpodcast.podbean.com. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, slash Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that stuff. You have a podcatcher app, we're definitely there. And if we're not, let us know, and we'll be there. Uh, you can also find us on Redbubble, uh, Redbubble redbubble.com slash people slash WWTT podcast, uh, patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. We do have a Patreon page. You can check that out. Lots of stuff you can sign up for and, uh, you know, you help us. We help you. That's how it do. You like that? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we're on Facebook, of course, just search for us on Facebook. What were they thinking? And on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Also, I sometimes forget to plug this, and I definitely forgot to plug this last week, but I also have another podcast called For Screen and Country that is about the top 100 British films of all time on the... Uh, wow, I bungled that. On the BFI Top 100. That's the British Film Institute's Top 100 British Films of All Time on For Screen and Country, which you can also find on Podbean iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you. Uh, more later. More later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and when I said thank you, my, my mind just it naturally went to that. It works. Yeah. Copyright. For, thank God he's not around. You hear me? Do you hear right. me do that? Do, you're not going to tell him, are you? No, I won't say a word. Oh. <sighs> okay, Although thanks. the commercial pitch guy might. No, commercial pitch man. Wait, wait. Hold on. Why is Robin Thick behind you? Well, Brendan, I think you should uh, pay the commercial pitch, man. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Alan Thick. For, for, <laughs> former President Bill Clinton. Uh, I really do love this episode. It was uh, The last episode was actually better, though. Uh, if I could talk about Tyler Perry's Okay, genius, somebody get Clinton out of here. Get Clinton uh, out of here. I'm saying I love Tyler Perry Or Steve. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's go. Hey, I, easy there, pal. I'm a Take person. your sexy phone and get out. I'm glad Borshti's on my side. Well, he is the uh, he is the ostracized one of the family, from what I've been told. Well, we don't want to get into it too much. No. Turn around no. With, an ear, with an earshot. What was that? Nothing. Nothing, Borshti. Nothing. Okay, I thought I heard the insult. Nope. 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 We're Not good. At we're all. good. We're good. What else do I have to say? Oh yeah. So I guess that we come to the end. Yeah. We've announced what's next. Mm -hmm. We did it, Nathan. We made it through another mini episode. You got any questions? <laughs> I may have a few. Oh, do you? I do. Oh, please. Nathan. Mm-hmm. Live free or die hard. Yeah. That's a good movie. In my opinion, yes. But I've often heard people talk about it in very disparaging ways. 86% audience. Right? 82% critics. 
I know. This, this is a good movie. Apparently. What are we thinking? I don't know. We're happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. Listen to me. Please listen. If you don't, if you won't, if you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Are you ready to enter the sci-fi double feature drive-in? Every month we hold a special double feature with a very interesting theme thought up by your host, the conspiracy-loving Elisa, and yours truly, Jarrett the Kaiju Man Wegelin. We discuss giant monsters, little monsters, genetic abominations, robots gone awry, aliens coming to Earth, cryptids, and anything in between. So join us at the sci-fi double feature drive-in podcast every first and third Thursday of the month. And don't forget to stop by our snack bar first. Hi, I'm Jay Bats. And I'm Michael. And we're the hosts of a very thought-provoking show called The What If Podcast. On it, we'll explore the big and little what ifs of life and steer our listeners toward a better understanding of the real or hypothetical situations we might find ourselves in. Or not. On our journey, we'll learn interesting facts and fictions about the everyday world. And sometimes, most of the times, we'll dive headlong into rabbit holes that slide up against the subject and sharply turn away from it. Come along with us. We'll have fun and learn something new together. New episodes release every other Tuesday. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Music, and anywhere fine podcasts are archived.